Hello, welcome to this Scrap Time CHA wrap up. My name is Christine, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about overall trends that we've seen at the show. And I've been joined by a few of my friends Tammy Morrison, Stephanie Hackney with Paper Crafters Corner, Nancy Nally. So, who wants to get started? Tammy? Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just start rattling off trends? <laughs> well, pick a trend. Uh, okay, um, let's talk about coloring. Coloring. Yes. Coloring is the biggest trend at this show, I think, and um, not surprising. Oh. I think we've all seen it coming, but I am surprised at how many scrapbooking companies have coloring books or papers that you color in. Marion Smith Designs, who had been planners up until now, yeah. now has these Alice in Wonderland coloring pages that are 12 I, by 12. I found that really odd, the fact that they were Alice in Wonderland, right? right? And you're like... Um, oh, I've okay. seen companies see that? that have pens that they're touting for coloring and that sort of thing that really weren't even in any, I mean, you see some of these pen companies that have been around forever and they're kind of like, woohoo, we're relevant, we've got pens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, another one I saw that I found was a sort of, I, I had to get an explanation because I found it a little confusing, was Sizzix had coloring books. And I was trying to figure out, so their explanation was the designers, I think it might be some of their dye designs are in the coloring book and okay. then you can color and cut it out and use it with their dyes as backgrounds on cards or something. But I like that was this sort of a strange mail that jumping on the band a dye company that would have these coloring <laughs> books. Well, and Diane yeah. Reveley with Delusions has those coloring pages now. So instead right. of it being in a book, they're single pages. And her concept was, that it's a mix. It's her art using her stamps and her um, stencils. And so her, all her yeah, so like she's taken her piece piece with journal with pages mm -hmm. and shrunk them, and she yeah. put it on paper and she put it on canvas and in cutting different them apart sizes. is sort of the idea that you that you can paint or color this whole thing in and then cut it apart and use it in your journals. Yeah, Adorn mm -hmm. it has coloring books that are thick watercolor weight mm -hmm. paper. And yeah. they're perforated and designed to be taken out and decorate your walls. You can frame them when you're oh. done with them. So you can use markers or paints or whatever you want on them and then actually use that as decor. Yeah. And, and there's tag-sized ones as well. And yeah, Prima has um, a coloring book based on watercolor paper to use with their watercolors. Mm -hmm. And Which is another trend. Watercolors yeah. are huge. Yeah, you have actually the Prima watercolors. Yeah, actually here. this one. And, and what I like, I think is really cool about this, we'll put it down here. Um, they've got these three different sets. So there's Decadent Pies, the Classic, and Tropicals. But it's portable, you know, and I think portability is a big trend as well. People mm -hmm. wanting to be able to take things with you. So they almost look like little chocolates in there. But it's great because you can, you know, mix and match, take your stuff in and you take them with you. Um, and then they have canvases. Yeah, for these. Mm -hmm. Another talk about portability was Cosmo Cricut has these swatch sticks, mm -hmm. and um, again we have a video. I'll put the link below. But it, they're double ended and it's a sponge, and you just touch your sponge to the like you water, put some water down on your paper, touch it, and the ink just comes off the sponge, and they last quite a while. She said, and the whole set with five colors and a water brush it retails I think for ten dollars. So it's really affordable and a portable way to have your watercolors and like no mess watercoloring. Well, and I think the biggest overreaching trend that all of this is within is the relaxation craft trend. Mm -hmm. I think we're all tired of thinking so hard about our crafting and we want to just sit and play and color and go back to when we were five years old or watercolor and just sort of, you know, have the soothing motion of the painting. Um, there's a lot of fiber arts trends, the looms and the weaving. I think mm -hmm. that fits in there too. We want relaxation right now. Yep. Talking about the brains the, are fried. The loom Prima <laughs> has the, a loom kit, uh -huh. so everything comes together. You don't have to go and find the wool here and this there to make those beautiful wall hangings that you're seeing on Pinterest and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's the new eye loom. So the right. eye loom is a is a so like looms a, are a thing. yeah. But it, what I think is cool about that is to your point earlier that we need to figure out how to get this millennial market in this industry and you know bring them in and kind of but do it in a way that works for them so that eye loom uses the iPad. Right. to provide the tutorial for you yeah. and you know you can put and somebody they're making in it. bracelets right it's like friendship bracelets that are woven but it's for all ages and it, and it's using technology they're already super comfortable with right. which I think is pretty cool and while you're talking about something futuristic like the iLoom with the, the mobile devices the 70s are back 
Macrame. Yeah. Nostalgia craft <laughs> is what it I is. was calling it them. Is. Yes, yeah. it is. Well, and it's, it's everywhere. It's everything from the woodland animals to color schemes with the browns and all this other stuff to you know it, everywhere you look and and um, the dream and catchers the dream catch I mean it's it's it, you look all over the show floor and it is like 70s palooza I feel like I'm back in my childhood <laughs> but even and then with that is um, talk about simple craft is project kits uh -huh. mm -hmm. so like um, die cuts with a view has kits to make everything from jewelry to wall hangings they had um, a shadow box that you could put like ticket stubs in and things what else they had um, down here. They had, yeah, jewelry, shadow boxes, wall hangings. Obviously, there was another one. But those, you just buy the kit. You don't have to have a whole stock of materials. This kit will make the project you want to make. So that's so for people who don't want to invest into mm -hmm. full-on crafts. Or I also saw crochet kits on the floor to make uh, the little animals. So you can just buy this kit and it will provide everything you need. You don't have to buy piles and piles of yarn. Everything well, and again, I think that's for the a good entry point for people when they can buy something and make it all, and they don't have to be intimidated by I need an entire room full of papers and coordinating things and adhesives and all of that. You just make what's in the box. Yeah. Well, we saw at the last winter show last year, we saw Hazel and Ruby do that concept with their Crafternoon kits, which have been on store shelves in the last year at several of the major big box stores. Yeah. Then another. Uh, big trend is party decor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so everything from banners to um, pin the We Are Memory Keeper Keepers pinatas are really cute. Pinatas right. are a thing everywhere. I yeah. saw a pinata kit at the, with the kits. That was the other kit. Oh, but a pinata kit at Die Kits at the View. Yeah. Yes. Well, and then Sabor, um, which is the new kind of ethnic collection. I don't know if you got to their booth. They're right on the other side here. Um, and that's all so, so for the Latinas, um, for their Hispanic culture. And they've got some really cool little papers that have the pinatas because that's a big part of their celebrations. Um, so they had to, and really bright and colorful. Yeah. And that is a, that is a, the um, crafting market is growing in Latin America and South America. And we're starting to see the the products being produced reflect that that is an emerging market. Yeah, and foiling is still big with the addition to products. So like toner pens, adhesive pens, adhesive rub-ons, the Heidi Swap sprays and paints. Yeah. So anything I'm really excited metallic. about anything the metallic. Yes. Heidi Swap has this adhesive spray, so you could just spray it on, and then you put your foil and put it through your heat laminator and you can get some really random things with foil and I'm excited to play well, with that. And um, they've got, at Prima now, they've got these like adhesive rub-ons. Yeah, Christine Adolf. That you, that you yeah, Christine Adolf, that you don't even need the heat for. Yeah. So that you don't have to have a machine. You don't, you just rub on the adhesive and then you yeah. rub on the foil and... That's really great um, for art journalers because if you're working in a book, and you want to add foil. Um, I'm excited to try those rub-ons well, and adding foil Well, even the it. companies that are coming into the industry from outside, so Contact, you know, like Contact Paper that we all know, they have a booth, and they and I asked her, what are your most popular papers? And they, I mean, they have a really great collection over there, and it's the silver, the gold, the copper, yeah. and the cork. So cork yeah. is another one. Cork, yeah, I actually have a sample on display in uh, the Buttons Galore booth with, it's a frame, and it's a, um, the title on the frame is is cork. It's uh, canvas cork, uh, self adhesive cork sheets. Yeah. Um, and like wood grains, you have like all the wood grain papers. But then like Tim Holtz has his wood grain. Um, yeah, the embossed paper. Yeah, yeah. So you can you know put some paint along the top and then inks down below and have like two tone wood grains and. Yes, those little vignette panels. Well, the, and, yeah. and yeah. that goes back to the 70s theme because the wood grain is very 70s. Well, and there's a booth right over here down the aisle that you can print on sheets of wood. Right oh, over here okay. behind us. You can yeah. print photos on the, yeah. the thin sheets of wood. Yeah. Um, the marquee is still big. Heidi Swap has expanded She's her that line. light box, which I love. Oh, I love the light box, yeah. It's got That's, like the, the clear acetate letters, so mm -hmm. it's almost like a movie theater marquee where you can change out the words. 
Yeah. And then even like Tim Holtz came out with an alphabet die that layers his other alphabet eye and it has holes so you can do it as a marquee but then you can even use it for stitching or he was saying he puts uh, little rivets in it to make it look like it's riveted mm -hmm. but um, he had showed us in our demo with uh, he cut the main alphabet out of his sparkly paper the deco paper and then put the holes on top so that sparkle shows through um, cool. the alphabet Very cool Let's see and then also I a lot of companies had uh, 3D houses like dies. So Tim Holtz does amazing. His design team did the most amazing 3D houses. But then I also saw it at Hero Arts has a die yeah. that does 3D houses. And Sizzix, or that, not Sizzix, but where was the other one? Um, well, Tim Holtz is with Sizzix. Well, and Heidi Swap yeah. had, um, it was like a houses, but it was like a panel like a flip fold thing that came out at the last year at the end mm -hmm. of the year for you know that was houses so the house yeah. thing yeah but um, i'll put a photo of the the tim holtz on his design team with because he not only has houses but then he has dyes to have different roofings on top and then you can mix and match the pieces to make cottages and it was just you just sit there and the detail was just oh, like yeah, yeah. unbelievable some that of the 3d stuff that some of these people are starting to do as we're moving into more like home decor and some of this other stuff is is insanely detailed mm -hmm. and um, you know we're getting into like all the shadow boxes with the minute detail I mean those wood pieces over at Little B oh that I wood mean, folds is that what they were I don't even remember what they were called but they were, you know that massive collection yeah. that they were showing of all the little wood figurines and to make your designs. own uh, music boxes and stuff yeah oh well, I, so I was walking through there going these are and they they're showing actually they've got shadow box pieces you know mm. that they then you can put them in the, to, to make shadow boxes I mean yeah, those so will kill cute. in the shadow box market yeah then I, I was also noticing with a lot of companies is putting designers to their label like we spoke a bit of before spellbinders every collection is by a designer it's not necessarily by spellbinders oh yes definitely well, and I think the private label is a huge trend in, in a lot of industries right now and I think it's just landing here too having something that feels like a private label within your brand yeah like and, Fiskars has Teresa yeah. Collins stamp, or punches well you like, know why that is is because of the power of social media in marketing mm -hmm. Nobody, uh, it, it makes it the marketing more personal when you have the marketing going out on the designer's account and the designer's following say, hey, check out my product on Instagram or whatever versus a corporate name brand yeah. account that doesn't have like, a face to it. Like American and, Crafts has been doing it for quite a while now with the Dear Lizzie and Amy Tangerine yeah. and Chamel. Yeah, the the you have to have a face for your marketing because of the power of social media, and so it's it's all it's, everybody's going to signature lines. I mean, we just yeah. launched one at Buttons Galore with May Fong. I mean, it's, yeah. you need a face. Yeah, so and it has to be a face that already has a good following. Exactly. Somebody yeah. who's got a good Somebody social who's media got the following that knows power. how to do the branding and the marketing. Yeah. 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 Being a signature designer these days is as much about your marketing and social media prowess as it is about your design skill. You can be the world's most talented designer, but if you do not have the marketing and you know social media presence and ability, forget it. Yeah. How about faith-based? Journaling, yes. faith based scrapbooking. I saw it. Prima, they have. They were doing um, a demo yesterday. I just glanced over, but they had their Bible and they were doing all the Bible journaling right. with their products. So and Stephanie that. Ackerman has um, with Adorn It. Mm -hmm. um, she has hers. And, and then Bella um, Boulevard right, has their Bella massive Boulevard. illustrated faith illustrated collection. Faith. That and and huge. that's huge. I mean, that's way outside of our industry, too. I mean, that the, the faith based art journaling thing. I mean, she's doing things outside the industry as well. A lot of the Christian stores are doing it. There's actually two well, events that just got was announced a, on Instagram this morning. That there was a couple on. shows ago that um, Project Life had announced that they were doing the special Project Life kits that were going into the Christian bookstores for the um, missionary uh, right, albums. Right. So, I mean, the, the, 
we they've been inching that way and it's companies are looking for as the traditional scrapbook retailers have disappeared these companies are looking to produce products that can go in other retailers right. and the, the, the Christian uh, book you know market is another set of retailers that they can get in. Well, and the same with the, the party supplies and the planner stuff. I mean, yeah. when you go into the national stationery shows or the gift shows, mm -hmm. that gets you a whole new audience that's never seen your stuff and you can be fresh and new and exciting, whereas we've already been seeing it for many years. Yeah, it's diversification. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Zentangle still seems yeah. to be popular. Um, and then, again, like we, like we talked in another video about, you know, using an embroidery or putting it on fabric or putting it on clothing or, you know, doing other things with the Zentangle, making cards with the pages you make. Mm -hmm. um, and there's um, a gal over at uh, Fox Publishing, and we shot a demo with her, and she does something called Nando, and it's a Japanese art where it combines uh, paper cutting with Zentangle. So you take a, a block of paper, you cut out pieces of it, and then you flip those over like mirror images outside of this box, and then you Zentangle in those openings. It's actually very cool. I mean, it's just that it's another way to keep yeah. that alive and exciting for people. Yeah, for sure. Any other? Oh, colors. Am I the only one who thinks that the entire show floor has been taken over by pink? And navy. Pink and navy, yes. yes. But the pink. Fully noticed, but. Yeah, it seems like it's pink. So. It seems like it's, there's a lot of pink in the new like paper collections and, and everything. And a lot of bright colors. You know, like companies that had multiple lines, they almost all of them had one line that was a lot of bright colors happy colors. That's good. We need happy. Right. I mean, we saw a lot of pink in the, the summer releases, even for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And now when it's spring and summer stuff that everybody is showing, it seems like it's just everywhere. Pink. Stencils. Stencils are still huge. Oh, yeah. Everybody is adding stencils to their collections. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they had, um, la we were talking about layering stamps earlier. They've got layering stencils at um, prima no. combining two trends that's you know I think Julie did some of those a couple of years ago where she would have a flower like yeah. a soil flower yeah. and then a detail to go over yeah these are that. little six by six ones that mm -hmm. like in each of their collections like that have images that match the individual collections mm -hmm. tassels yeah, oh, there was a tassel kit. There's a tassel maker at Clover, Clover that was one of the hot product picks, and I think that it's coming from both the decor, the party decor arena, yeah. and the planners where they hang off the top yeah. of your planner. And, and of course, it's very 70s. Her, uh, yeah, my it's mind's all the 70s has influence. tassel banners. Mm -hmm. Is tassel part of their banners, party things. tassels as embellishments, tassel makers. They're everywhere. Yeah, and I think Dear Lizzie had some tassels. Mm -hmm. Maggie yeah. Holmes had some. Tassels, yeah. Yeah. Webster's had some. String art is coming back. Yeah, because that's another Cosmo, 70s craft. Cosmo yeah. Cricket had it a year ago, and now I noticed a few more booths this time. Yeah, yeah. Jilly Bean has, has it. Yeah. Well, and yeah. one of the <laughs> designers I want to say, maybe it was Dear Lizzie, had a 12 by 12 pattern that you could do string art, like oh, as I, the background of a scrapbook page. It might have been Amy T. It was one of those one on of the them. end of American yeah. Crafts over there. Well, and Amy had come out with that stitching kit, yeah. like last year, I think yeah. it was stencils mm -hmm. and stitching. Yeah. But this yeah. was the string art where you, there's a pattern and you put your brads in. Paisley. It's one of the American Crafts It's brands. one of those over yeah. there. And you put your brads in and you do your string and it's like the background of your page. Yeah, interesting. And the, I'm noticing that the segments that are starting to come at the show and we're seeing this filter in even to the paper crafting is that the needlework is getting hot and the sewing are getting hot. And we're seeing that filter into the stuff that's being released by even the paper crafting companies because you're seeing things like um, sewing and, and needle art themed then stuff. Like you're seeing the paper crafting companies have stuff right. that has like embroidery hoops on it and yeah. you know, so well, and stuff. if you look at the trends that are happening, the shaker boxes have come back as a trend. And if you kind of figure, well, everything's cyclical, and you look at what came after that last time, the fibers got really, really hot after the shaker boxes last time. So I think we'll see a ton of interesting fibers cross over into the embellishment market next time. That's a good 
point. That did happen. Yeah. I'm just hoping that we don't bounce all the way back to the brown grunge that we oh, did. No, 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 no. We no. can't let that happen. No, no. <laughs> we'll, I'll uh, Life fight needs to, to the be death. colorful. Yes, I'll fight to the death to prevent pages? that. pages? To me, that seemed to be less prevalent. I mean, it seemed like for a while every company was jumping on that bandwagon and there just wasn't, it wasn't as prevalent. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I agree. It's not as prevalent. I think it's still happening. Oh, yeah. People are still doing it. Um, I noticed the Project Life section of American Crafts seemed a little more low-key than it has in the past. Um, I sort of feel like, and this is just, I have no research to back this up. This is just my personal thought, but I feel like for me personally, having bought some of that stuff, there's a lot of stuff that you get in a Project Life kit, more than I can yeah. use any Project Life time. <laughs> I know, I you know, think they should sell it in like, here's a pack they of They need 10, to split those down 40. smaller, I don't because when you buy a something. year's worth of stuff, then people don't need anything else for a year. And there's always going to be the fun little embellishments and all that, but there's so many you know, there's only so many page configurations you can do. You've got your box of 365 title cards or whatever. I think that they're gonna have to break that down into smaller bits if they want people to keep coming back for more. Yeah. Well, they do do the mini kits, mm -hmm. the, the, the value, value, kits. value kits and and stuff with, and some of them do have the embellishments in them and but stuff. But do you feel like a lot of people are already in pretty deep with enough yes. supplies to last them for you mean a long like time? You mean like yeah, me? Yeah, like and me. <laughs> yes. I feel like I'm in deep enough that, that and, and maybe the store owners are feeling that too, that people aren't buying as much because they've already invested in this mass quantity of Project Life stuff. And I've taken to use them for cards mm -hmm. because you can just idea. pop one card, you can cut a piece yeah. of it, or you can put it on, mm -hmm. add some other stuff on top, and I mean you can whip three or four oh, yeah. cards I use, out. I use them on twelve by twelve layouts. Sure, yeah. I do you take too. a couple of four by six, plenty. three by four cards, yeah. and spread them around. Yeah. They, they, it's a nice color blocking effect, basically. Yeah. But I think where the the thing that interested me as far as pocket pages was me and my big ideas had the pocket pages that fit the planner. Mm. I like the idea that you could cross over and add some, mm -hmm. you know, a pocket page full of photos into your planner. Mm -hmm. Since the whole punch situation is different on everything, you know, yeah. I, I, I thought that was a good addition to that. So that's maybe a way that they can continue to incorporate is if we see more planner products that cross over with that. And it would make sense for a Project Life planner. They actually yeah. have released a, a six by eight size one in the past. But, but with it planner been, pages? Yeah, with planner pages. Huh. I but it, that. it hasn't, I was about to say, it has not been heavily pushed or promoted. I saw it on the shelf, I believe, at Michael's. Interesting. And, but it has not been a huge, you know, a huge initiative from them. Lots of alterable items still. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of lots of companies that that's all they sell, and then companies having that as part of their line. When I talk to the people at Graphic Forty Five, you know, this is their biggest release of staples yet. Mm -hmm. I think they have forty some products that they came out in this release. So like, and lots of little metals. You know, like the ideology metals, yeah. the Graphic Forty Five Prima. You know, metal things that you can adorn and, and change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other yeah. ones, Tammy? Um, sequins. I'm seeing yeah. a lot of sequins. Yeah, we did sequins, sequins. and buttons galore in a big way. Yep. Yeah. And I think They're that goes with shaker. the shine and the sparkle and the metallic plus the shaker, shaker trend. And, and, and like I pocket them, pages, they go nicely I've in used there. them in art journaling because it gives you that sparkle without the dimension. Yeah. And so they're really And that's why they work use. in pocket pages too. Yeah. So they're fun to use and there's so many colors. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And those are something. trending pretty heavily. Um, on Instagram so there's a company called pretty pink posh that does them and they do like mm -hmm. custom mixes so every month they release a new mix of those the, the thing with sequence too though really inexpensive yeah but yeah. you mm -hmm. get like hundreds of yes. the thing so once you have each color you're good for life right like, right you, uh, well and especially like because the card makers will use them like a six use, at a time and yeah just dot them on a card mm -hmm. and so you know they go a long way but um, obviously, if you're doing like a shaker or something like that, you'll go through more. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, sequins are so versatile. I've also seen them. people using them in embroidery. Yeah. Yes, I Whether, actually have. A, know, I, I actually have a project I'm working on right now that's going to have sequins on it. That's a cross stitch thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, awesome. That's where they started was sewing. They well, have holes and, in them for sewing. And the yeah. party <laughs> decor confetti kind of idea. Right. That, Compasses because not all the sequins that I've seen have the holes in them. I actually They're like the ones without when yeah. I'm using them. 
They're more like sprinkles. For I'm waiting to see the huge wall size ones come next for the party decor. Yeah. <laughs> so portable storage was another yeah. one we talked about. Portable storage and well, storage in general. I mean, it's storage is always a hot topic in the the mar in, in the online world, but it had disappeared from the market and now. You know, there's if you're a storage junkie, man, this show floor, I my list of places I had to go to visit to see all the storage has been huge. And in fact, every time I think I've gotten them all, I suddenly realize <laughs> there's like two more I've got to go see. I've got yeah. several on my list still for today. Yeah. So overall, though, did you think it was a good show? Did you? I thought it was a quieter show. Yeah. But people seem hopeful. Everyone I talked to seemed hopeful and encouraged by the way they're diversifying. Um, I heard even though it was quieter, the people that were here were placing large orders. Well, that's always good. So that's mm -hmm. good for manufacturers. I talked to a lot of people who have diversified, you know, maybe they don't have just scrapbooking anymore and they seem hopeful that that's keeping them afloat in the industry. And I talked to store owners about, you know, what are you buying? What are you looking at? What did, what was like at the top of your list when you were coming in the morning that they were letting everybody in for the first time? And a lot of them said their plan was to go through and try to have more of a diverse selection. So instead of buying, you know, 12 different paper lines, that maybe they'd buy six paper lines and then bring some other things. So some mixed media supplies or home decor supplies or some of the trending things, planners, whatever it might be, so that they do have a little more more of a diverse offering in their stores. Yeah. Yeah, and then I also heard uh, from some manufacturers that people who didn't place orders with their lines that had come out, once they actually saw them in person, either then decided to place an order or doubled the order. So it does make... Which is good for the value of the show and coming yeah. here and seeing mm -hmm. the things in person. So even yeah. though you can see all the pictures online, when you actually see the products, it's either Definitely. better than you thought or it could be the other way. It's like, oh, it wasn't what I thought it's it was going to be. It's really hard to judge um, particular things, especially color, mm -hmm. when you're looking online because, mm -hmm. you know, if your monitor isn't adjusted correctly or if the color that is printed is not a web-friendly color, you are not getting an accurate. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, meh, when I see something on the computer in, in the previews and then I walk in the show floor and I look at it and I'm like, that is awesome. It looked horrible on the computer and or seeing it in action mm -hmm. yeah or seeing it or you're like why would I want that I don't get it and then you come in and you see a demo and you're like oh I get it <laughs> well and especially for the texture so like think about like Cartabella paper they have the most beautiful texture on their paper you can't you can't see that online exactly and authentic too. that I mean mm -hmm. the weight of that paper you have to feel it to understand it so I guess we are all firm believers of attending CHA and we always enjoy coming and seeing everything new and we've all done videos or we'll have blog posts of everything here so if you check out any of our sites I'm sure you'll get more coverage than you really want to watch. <laughs> so thanks for joining us and we will see you next year at CHA. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Scrap Time Videos, to be the first to see the latest videos from CHA 2016.